You know what? Inside of every one of us is greatness. And the journey to bring out that greatness is one that we must win, is one that we must fight on, is one we cannot give up. The reason why we do the Gold Mine Show is to remind you about the greatness that is resident on the inside of you and to keep reminding you about the fact that then you've got to just bring out. Join us every Saturday at 8 p.m. only on the Gold Mine Show on Facebook, on YouTube, as well as on Instagram. See you soon. Well, hello and welcome to yet another amazing, amazing episode of the Gold Mine Show. We are extremely excited just to bring this out. And as we say a lot of times, there is gold inside of you and there is greatness inside of you. And you cannot quit fighting the battle of just bringing through. Today's show is just a show that you just want to ask many other people just to tune in. Because it's an amazing story of resilience. It's an amazing story of just not quitting. And you definitely want to just tune in and just watch. We are coming to you from the Pete's Cafe. My name is Dennis Nja and we want to invite you. Follow us on the Goldmine Show on Facebook, on YouTube and also on LinkedIn. Happy to invite our guest today, none other than... It's, it's, it's actually a, a guest that probably does not need too much introduction. You probably know her and I'm so excited just to bring on the show Fanny Awidi. You have such an energy. <laughs> well, I'm excited to have yeah. you today. <laughs> thank you for having me. And thank you so much just for coming. Yeah. To truly, truly honor that you would just come. Thank and you for having me. You know, your story is just an amazing story. Yeah. And, 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 and it gives a lot of encouragement to mm -hmm. a lot of people and a lot of hope to so many people. And thank mm -hmm. you for just speaking it out. A scientist. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thank you for coming to the Gold Show. I, I want us to go all the way to Form 2. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And uh, something significant happened. Mm -hmm. And some important information came to your notice. Yeah. You want to talk us to, about that? Definitely, yeah. Please. So, um, just like any other Form 2 girl right. or, or, or uh, student. Yes. There's always that comes to Ashule right. in Form 2, yeah. Yes. So, there's this organization that comes to school and then they're offering soda and bread. Right. For in exchange you test for HIV, I'm like, oh God, this is this is such a gold. Yeah. Like you put it, you know what I mean? I'm just this is this is not a big deal. And you yeah? know that Casada and Mukata yeah. is quite something, and especially in high school. Yeah, it's a it's big quite deal. Something, Absolutely. Yeah. And I remember it was just a week after visiting and no one came to visit me. Oh. Yeah, so I felt like wow, this is such an now opportunity. Now that I skip that, this is the moment. Yeah, this right. is like my visiting, you correct, know? Yeah. Correct, so I correct. went there and mm -hmm. then I tested. Mm -hmm. But I remember walking um in that room. Mm -hmm. I met my school nurse. Right. So our school nurse was not so forgiving. Right. Um, in, 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 a, in a girls' girl school, normally we never, we never really like uh, school nurses mm -hmm. because they would test you for pregnancy and then they, they overpress the tummy right. and all that. They, they harass you in the Correct. process, you know. Correct. So it was such a, an, an you don't unfortunate like being pressed year. all the time. No, no, because I'm inclusive? like, okay, don't but have, I'm not pregnant, so why, why are you intruding? Right. Yeah, and right. then... Um, right. She actually was the one who was there as a counselor. Okay. And she tested when I just walked in. It mm -hmm. was a room full of so many lockers. Correct. There was no that privacy or confidentiality in counseling and all that. Right. Yeah. So just, I, I walked into her mm -hmm. and then she started asking me, Fanny, so do you have a boyfriend? I, I told her, no, I don't this have a boyfriend. This is a Sumbi girls, right? Yeah, that's a Sumbi girls. Right. Yeah. Okay. That is in 208. Right. Do you have a boyfriend? I said, no, I don't have a boyfriend. Uh, okay, have you ever tested for HIV before? I'm like, and there was no, no boyfriend for, for real at that <laughs> no, point? No, for real, for real. It for was real. for real, for real. You're for not real. managing them. <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> I, was, I didn't have a boyfriend, right, yeah. Right, right, okay. Um, you know, she was asking me all these questions. At yep. the back of my mind, I'm like, girl, the sudden bread is Let's going to be over. Thing, yeah. man, go <laughs> we need to be right, done, yeah. Right, right. So and then she said, uh, have you ever tested before? I'm like, no, I've never tested before. But <laughs> at the back of my mind, I'm like, Bring this the thing is out, going man. to be over, yep. yeah. Right. And then, uh, so she tells me that, okay, so... Uh, double line means positive, single right. line means negative. Right. I'm like, okay, let's just. So she's get managing it over you with. for whatever the outcome. This is how we read the, yes. the, the, the results. Yeah, All this right. is how we interpret the results. Correct. Yeah. So then uh, finally, now we draw the blood, and yep. then uh, she tells me that, okay, this is going to take probably five minutes. Correct. Uh, I'm like, wow, that, that's a very long time. In Asumbi Girls, you were 1,000. That year, we were about 1,300 students. That's a big number. Yeah. That's a yeah. big number. 
So, or are they testing everybody in the school? They are not testing everybody, but just the ones who are willing to take the soda. You just use your common sense. Right. For soda and bread, everyone would go for right, the test. Right. You know. So eventually, yeah. almost everyone shows up for the test. Exactly. Because they want the soda and yeah, the bread. Yeah, yeah. It was such a queue. Right. Uh, so then they tested. He, she tested me, and then after about five minutes, the results came back, and mm -hmm. then she was like, "Okay, so." Um, they said you don't have a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's I what I said. You know, right. and there's already some bad blood between me and her by nature because right. she's a school nurse. Right. I told you her, already yeah, don't no like her. Exactly. Yeah. So on top of that, she's like, oh, she's the bearer of bad news. Mm. Um, so it turned out uh, positive. This double line. I just looked at her like, no. She said, yeah, it's it's double line, okay. And she said it's double line. Now you can go. That was so it. when she says double and what's coming through your mind at this point? I'm like, this is a school nurse. Right. She's definitely lying. Right. Um, I'm a virgin. By then I was a virgin. I'm like, no, this can't happen. Of I, course. Haven't, I don't yeah. have a boyfriend. Yeah. I've not been doing anything. Yeah, and then yeah. it's 208. We had all these billboards of Ukimu Unaua and all that. Mm. So the only way to contract HIV was through sexual con uh, transmission, right. which I, I, I did not practice You're at still that a time. Yeah. At the time. Yeah, so I was like, no, this can't be. And coming from this lady, she's mm. lying. Mm. So I walked out mm -hmm. of the room. Mm -hmm. I actually registered for my sudden bread still. Because that's what we were coming for yeah, after all. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was focusing, you right. know. Focus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right. I went for the sudden bread. Right. And um, the moment I held the sudden bread, I remember we were we were dividing. You, you need to share half half. All right. But that was such a big deal because the normal bread mm. was quoty. Right. We called it quoty. Quotas. Yes. Because I remember those. Yes. Yeah. Right. So this was half. Right. Oh my God, that was such a big deal. So I went. <laughs> what? Right. I walked. I walked out of the room, and um, the sudden bread. I don't know how they fell off my hands. Because I was thinking, this lady doesn't like me, yeah. But how can she forge the results that you know we actually we were there? So this is real. This is happening, yeah. So as you're holding your sword and bread, you're still thinking about the results. Yeah, that have been the shared results. With you. Yeah, and then all of a sudden the world just became so so small for me. And I remembered, okay, actually if this is happening, who am I going to confide in? Uh, in a family of six, I'm the last born. Right. I my my mom passed on and I was ten. My dad Sorry. passed on and I was five. Sorry. So I figured, oh my God, this is this is really happening, you know. I I need to figure out how. So this to is the moment it just hit you now. Exactly. What has just been said? Exactly. Right. Yeah, and uh, the the soda and bread fell off my hands, and I had to I had to really think about the next thing. Right. The only person that I could confide in was my best friend at the time. But just hold on before you go. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that after your given your results there was no cancelling nothing no it was just nothing. it was double line yeah, that's it go. deal with it yeah so basically and how are you old that are you at this time ah uh, 16 so it's yeah. a 16 year old girl yeah. just been told it's a double line yeah. deal with it yeah there is yeah. your bread move on yeah and wow. um those days they were giving uh some paper there was a paper written uh plus ve mm -hmm. and then i was i think number 283 i'm not so sure right so then i took the paper and i went to my best friend i right. figured i could only talk to my best friend at that time so Correct. i told her okay i'm um, also informed too like you uh yeah she was informed too yeah okay. right. uh so i told her okay um we tested and then this is the results mm -hmm. i'm positive mm. she's like no Fanny. i really really liked the joke so she, she even thought i was I was so joking about this, jokes. yeah. Right. So she said, no, mm. I'm like, no, I'm for real. Yeah. I, I tested positive and I had to show her the evidence of And this is the e. same day? Yeah. All right. Yeah, and she said, oh my God, Fanny, I'm so, so sorry. Mm. You know what, don't worry. I have aunties and uncles who are positive. We, we are going to walk through this together. So she had been dealing with other HIV yeah, positive. Yeah, yeah, okay. At least she saw some, yeah. Right. But then, uh, so of course, I got so reluctant mm. at that time. Mm. But then after four days, I remember going to serve in the DH, mm -hmm. and there was this group of girls. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I was so plump. Mm. So this girl started saying that uh, she's, uh, she's actually so plump mm. because she takes those medicine, those drugs. This like, is only wow. four days after. It's four days after, so it means that my friends, could, my friend, could not hold the story. She actually leaked it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So you must I have went, felt very betrayed at that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I actually didn't go to serve. I really liked the area. I right. still do. Right. 
I didn't go serving Gideri. Mm. I had to go back to the dormitory and I asked her, okay, did you share my story with anyone else? And her response was, I need my, my, my bed sheets. I want my utensils. I need the uniforms. You're going to infect me with, the, with AIDS. No way. She didn't even say HIV. She no. said, unenda kunyambukiza ukimu. No way. Yeah. This is your best friend. Yeah, yeah. So, and she really came through for so me. So she's already she told everybody friend. out there. Yeah. And now she wants everybody so that yeah. everything so that you don't infect her. Yeah, so that I don't infect her. According to her, even black. Remember, she's the same person who knew how people living with HIV Because she has relatives who are in that situation. Yeah. Right. But then right now, oh. it means that HIV can be infected according to her through blankets, you know. So I had to give it to her. Oh, no. I was such a careless person. So by the time I was in form one, second week, I didn't have anything. <laughs> the uniforms and been all a that. Very yeah. Low moment for you. Yeah, it was. It was such a low moment. But I quickly thought about it. Okay, so if my friend knows and my friend's friend knows about it, I mean almost as soon be girls rumors. So we used to spread so like we can assume there are 1,300 students that are aware. That's not about it, yeah. Right. So I figured, okay, what I need to do with my information is go and tell it to my counsellor, mm. to our counselling teacher. Mm. We had a teacher who would be saying, uh, if you have any issue, you know, you can always confide in us right. and everything. Right. But then at the back of our minds, we felt like uh, these teachers are going to discuss our issues in the, in the staff room. You're not but sure at you this can time, trust them. At this time, I didn't have, I, I didn't have anything to lose, you right. know. Yeah. After so, all, everyone in the school probably yeah, knows. Yeah, I knew about it. It's right. just that they could not see it from, they couldn't hear from my own, right. yeah, or right. my own mouth. Yeah, yeah, I could not like really confess that I'm positive. Right. I went to the counseling teacher. I told her that I'm positive mm. and she was so remorseful, of course, at first. But then she told me, you know what, life goes on. We right. need to call your sister. Right. So that's when they called my sister right, right away. Right. And they told her, you know, um, we need you to come mm. to to the to the school it's right. so urgent right i remember it was very cheeky and she knew about it so she said okay Fenia <laughs> mefanya nini sasa just a cheeky girl you yeah. know <laughs> what did she do right uh is she pregnant right. like wow <laughs> am, I, am i being viewed in terms of pregnancy you know yeah, they think anything is possible yeah, you know, anything is possible with Fenny. so is she pregnant no uh, so you must have been be, a very cheeky girl. Then. I was very, very, very cheeky, cheeky but chiniamaji. Chiniamaji too. My, like my this. crimes were very, very minimal. Right. The noise making, right. the sharp one. I, I, I did not upgrade. Correct. You know, I was just there, <laughs> there, yeah. Kuibaiba kitungu kwa shamba so that I go and cut away with Gideri. You didn't it's say that. Dogo dogo, yeah. <laughs> right. So, so they called your sister. Yeah, so they right. called my sister. And then the, the third thing that she, she said, okay, are you suspending her? No. Uh, is she HIV positive? Mm -hmm. They said no, but mm. that was so specific, you right. know. I mean, why would you ask that? Yeah, yeah. Mm. among all the questions to ask right. in, in regards to cheekiness, why right. would you concentrate on that? So Correct. my sister came, mm. and um, she was told if eventually that I'm positive, and she's like, "Wow, you know, we knew that Fanny was positive." They knew. Yeah, all this time uh, because my mom was HIV positive, and she got it from my mom. But then no one really had the courage to tell her that she was positive. Wait yeah, a Meaning yeah. What, that right the same facial expression is the same one I was giving my sister. Like, how come no one time? said this to yeah, me? Yeah, right. Yeah. So that was I felt so betrayed. Um, but so, I did so show. So let's get that straight, mm -hmm. Fanny. So it means what? You have been positive all your life. All my life, I've been positive. You've not yeah. had one single day that no. it has been negative. No, never. But, but why did they keep it away from you? I mean, uh, what in medical intervention have been done at that point? Well, they, they say that it's because of stigma and everything, which right. I really understood because that was 208 where we still had billboards in Kenya with, with all these skeletons in terms of AIDS is a killer disease and everything, right. you know. Right. But uh, that was my first time starting to develop another trait that I didn't really like. I started saying that I'm fine. Well, I'm not fine. I remember telling my sister, I'm okay. It's okay. Don't even I mean, it worry must have about it. It a very it. difficult moment at that point. It Just was. hearing your very own sister telling yeah. you, we've known this all along. Yeah. So they knew all along you're yeah. the only one who didn't know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they had to wait all the way until you get a form yeah. 2 for you to get mm -hmm. real. Now it's even worse because I'm the only one who was infected. Ma uh, the rest um, of your siblings are not. They, they were okay, yeah. So at... Um, when my when our fifth born was born, mom and dad separated. Right. And then when they came back together after two years, right. I think someone one of them had moved on. Right. So when they came back, they infected. 
the other one infected another one right. and yeah it was conceived during that process right, yeah right so this was so traumatizing for me I can imagine. and that I can was imagine. from two second term right. uh, third term i mean i had to go back home of course mm. i had to start my my medication right all those misconceptions about arvs were on me right uh ni kubwa zinanyonga mtu kwa right, throat and right, everything you, ha right. you have to divide them in two and everything right. i had to get through counseling for me to really accept myself yeah right. but it was such and a you're process. already being stigmatized in school in by school. your friends your best yeah friend now the worst else. thing is that my uncle had paid fees from form one to form four there's no way i was going to have the luxury of saying that i need a transfer from your fanny asome all the way no so I, I was there and right. I used to perform so well, but right. then I made up my mind not to perform. I said, you know what? I can only take but not, but, but so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit books, but I'm in school. So I stopped studying. During downtime, I would say, Ni and then it too. So I would really get so cane most of the time. Right. And they used to use the Bunsen burner pipes. Right. I would really receive lots and lots of buns and banner pipes. Why? Because of not because, or why? because not going for dance, not going for preps, not right. showing up. Um, I would really fail in my exams. I'm one of those students who, um, when the chemistry teacher would come in class, I, I think the most I scored from from three was about. Nikienda sana ni ten percent. Oh no. Iye vizuri practicals from plus theories. Zote. This thing suddenly yeah. crushed your world somehow. It did. It did. It completely. Yeah. It changed it completely for mm -hmm. you. It did. And um, it showed. And was anybody walking with you through this? I, I literally closed doors for people by pretending that I'm okay. And you knew inside your I was not okay. So you're putting up a face on the yeah. outside, yeah. but inside you're crushing. Oh, yes. So I say that I'm fine. I Me, mean, I'm managing. Everything is okay. Did Until your counseling teachers pick this up? They didn't because I didn't even allow them. I used to tell them I'm okay. I'm starting. You know what I did? I did exactly what the society wanted me to do. Be happy, live a positive life, right. take the medicine, right. the ARVs. That's what I used to do. Right. But I used to have all these side effects of the ARVs that right. I didn't even address at that time. Correct. You know, nightmares, right. diarrhea, right. vomiting. Right. And at the time of taking medicine, remember it was those days were twice a day at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. So I would sneak to go get my medicine mm. and in the process get the teacher on duty on the way mm. and I would also receive my buns and banner pipes. Oh, no. So for the rest of my life from form three up to the time I was done with the exams, every single day there was a four buns and banner pipes guarantee. Because I could not speak it up. I could not just say I am actually HIV positive, I'm going for my ARVs. Never. Yeah, so then after Form 4, I got my C-, minus, which I didn't even work for. And then um, I, after that, I started cancelling. I really, really needed to do cancelling because I said I'm going to recover all the lost years. You know, I, I, I felt like I was punishing people around me. But then I, I ruined my life according to me. You were you taking know? away from your own life. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so I started, of course, when you get a C minus, you need to start from certificates. Right. Yeah, and right. then diploma. So right. that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you did a certificate in what? In counseling, psycho in counseling. Uh, yeah, counseling psychology at Amani Counseling Center. Right. Yeah, and then I did diploma as well. Out of curiosity, why did you choose counseling as a vocation? I did counseling because I wanted to impact lives, but at that time I didn't know that it would be this. I just wanted Come to on, impact uh, lives. Look, Fanny, I yeah. mean, you needed to cancel yourself yeah. in the first place. But I didn't even think about it in that way. I, 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 I forgot about my feelings. I forgot about me. I just wanted to be out there for people. Until after Form 4, and actually when you're going through counseling, there's a, there's a, a session called therapy session, personal therapy session, right. where now, like you're saying it, I felt like, wow, okay. For me to cancel someone, I need counseling myself. You need to myself. I mean, yeah. I, I can't imagine a 16-year-old walking yeah. through the weight of all of this, mm -hmm. a 17-year-old, yeah. an 18-year-old. I mean, that one must have been too heavy for you to it bear was. at that point. It was. So at what point then did you find a balance and mm -hmm. said, I'm no longer going to suppress myself. Mm -hmm. I think I also owe myself a certain duty mm -hmm. and responsibility. At mm -hmm. what point did you then go through this? Um, 
of course um moving forward i um i got i started we men started uh being interested in me and uh, girl. yeah yeah I, I was so hippie at that time right, you know? right. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I felt like and okay. They saw the I need, and I'm like, we yeah, need to talk to this yeah, girl. Yeah, typical man, man right. you know. So <laughs> right. I said, okay, I need to be so honest with these people yep. uh, because I read stories in the internet of people um, infecting others, and then they write it down in the list, and then they take a photo, and they are like, nani nani, you're infected. I've infected the you know? following yeah. number. Yes, I remember so those So we days. are going to die together right. and right. all that. So right. I wanted to change that. Right. And um, I used to tell people... So you people, didn't feel the urge to do that at all? I didn't feel the urge to do that because I went through real stigma first and, you right, know? Me, right. I was so stigmatized. Correct. Even you'd be holding a, a duster in school. Yep. And after that, they're like, Nani had come me, she can At was it Straight in the bin. Right. Yeah, I even had, yeah, I even had a, a teacher come inside class. Right. And then he was asking, who is Feni Awiti? Then I raised my hand. Yep. And then he said, okay, I just wanted to know. Right. And that was it. So me, I received stigma oh, no. first hand. And right. I didn't want anyone to go through what I went through. Right. So anyway, I would tell every man that was hitting on me and being so interested in me that mm. I'm HIV positive. Right. And they would all and run away. They would doubt it. Oh, they would run oh, away. Oh, they would go. Right. Yeah. You know, at first, uh, of course, you don't tell someone that you are HIV positive immediately. Right. You know, you... you um, you let it, you, you create some bonds, some relationship yeah. and all that. And right. then after that, you finally tell them right. and they would not give in. Right. So from babe to sister in Christ. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it changes. <laughs> changes drastically. And, right. Um, uh, they were so good with, you know, pick it easy. Those days are uh, Longomba's song, right, you know. Right, right. Pick it easy, kula vizuri, Correct. you know. Yeah, Correct. they were so much for it. <laughs> and, <laughs> They were the ones who are you actually my nutritionist at right, that time. Yeah. Right. I got rejected by fifteen men, just for the record. Oh, no. Yeah. In what space of time? Um between twenty ten to twenty thirteen. In three years, yeah. fifteen men. Yeah, yeah. And then finally I met the father of my two girls right. in 2014 right. and I told him the same thing. Mm -hmm. This was the sixteenth man. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what, let's, let's roll with it. Me, I'm was okay. Was he positive or was he negative? He was negative. He was negative. Yeah. Right. So, of course, at that time, I was a bit empowered. I right. went for counseling. Right. I even did uh, HIV testing and counseling. As a course, I really, really needed to know how HIV gets into the body up right. to where it is right, right. now. Right. Yeah. Just to so, understand the entire exactly, bit of Exactly. Yeah. Whatever is happening in my body, yeah. I needed to know why am I taking these ARVs? Right. How are they working? Right. You know, do right. I need any other supplements for this? I needed to really understand myself so, so by the time number 16 comes had mm -hmm. you gone public about your status yet no not as no. so he comes into your life yeah 2014 right. yeah right. so then we get her uh, uh he's so okay with the we test he's negative mm -hmm. to my surprise after three months he's still negative mm -hmm. so yeah we get her we, we we didn't even decide to have a baby you right. know most of the first ones they just come yeah you don't even prepare for it yeah so i'm pregnant at 22 and um we are all still young mm. We're just getting our, our lives together. And mm. then after that, I give birth. But then during the process, of course, now we had a lot, a lot of counseling sessions, you right, know, right. on how to give birth to HIV negative babies, on how to raise them, you right. know. There was some uh, syrup that the baby needed to be given right. at, uh, immediately after birth. Mm -hmm. This syrup is called nevirapin. Mm -hmm. I actually carried it, yeah. Right. It's called nevirapin. So right. nevirapin, you give the baby one hour after birth whether the baby okay. is feeding or right. not right. and uh, all through up to the time um, the baby is six weeks right. those days but then these days the WHO upgraded their guidelines to right. give the baby up to the time you stop the baby from breastfeeding yeah right. and you need to have in mind that when you're giving the baby this uh, when, you, when you intend to breastfeed the baby then right. you need to be undetectable Correct. And detectable means that the amount of virus in your body is very low. Right. Yeah. And this comes because of the ARVs? Yeah, it comes because of the ARVs, the ARVs because they suppress the virus. So Faraja comes. Mm -hmm. She has a beautiful name. By Thank you. I love her name. Thank you. Faraja. Thank you. <laughs> in our next show, you'll tell us a story about yeah. this naming. Yeah. So Faraja comes and then you give this syrup. Yeah. And she turns out negative yeah. three months down the road. Yeah. Turns out negative yeah. six months down the road. Yeah. So at what point did you still stop giving it to her? 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. So after that point, she's safe. She's safe. And she no longer yeah. now needs to take that. Yeah. And today Faraja is how old? Uh, six, five and a half. Five and yeah. a half. Beautiful baby, man. Yeah.
we will be showing you the pictures of Faraj, I mean, an amazingly beautiful baby. But shortly thereafter, mm. then you 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 work again and yeah, uh, we work again and, and like another one is on the way. We are in this <laughs> field, so we can just be giving birth. Right. You know? <laughs> so, so you pop off your second one at five months. Um, we conceive at five five months after Faraj. After Faraj, so right. Faraj is five months old, and I'm like, we are good to go. Right. Yeah. Yep. So of course now we get pregnant with the Hadi and um, we, uh, my relationship starts getting rocky. Right. Not because of HIV actually, just normal just relationship normal differences issues. Just normal differences between relationships. Yeah. So we finally break up right. when, for, when Ahadi was nine months in my womb. Right. And uh, I give back to Ahadi. Right. At two weeks now it's official. We are no longer together with the dad. And, um, and so yeah, it, it is you and Faraja and yeah. Ahadi. Yeah, yeah. Another so, beautiful girl, yeah. a beautiful, beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. So then you move on. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. At what point did you break the fact that then now I, and, and, and for the record, both mm -hmm. of them are negative today. Yeah. Beautiful babies. Mm -hmm. And we'll be showing them out in our mm -hmm. show today. Fantastic. So at what point did you then let the public know about your status? Uh, in 2017. 2017. Because I felt like the narrative was, was continuous, which was now becoming so old, you right, know. Right. I went back to the market, in yes, quotes, yes. you know, and I would I'm be like, I'm HIV positive. Now yeah. I'm, I even have a lo lot of burdens, you know, because Correct. now I have two kids. Right. You know, it's not like the one that I was single, you yep, know. Yep. So I said I'm not ready to go through that again. Right. And in 2017, actually, specifically, I was coming out because yep. I was tired of telling every man that I'm HIV positive. Right. That, is, that was my reason of coming out. So you want to make it known once and for all. Yeah. This is me. Yeah. So right. I came out and after coming out, reading through the comments, I felt like, wow, this is not even the reason for my coming out. We have, uh, well, there were so many positive comments, but then we had ignorant comments as right, usual right, because it's course. social media, right, yeah? Right, And I felt like I need to self-proclaim that I'm an activist, right? you know? Right. I need to, to, to get myself to become a HIV activist mm. because I have all that it takes, mm. you know? Mm. I have done, I have all this knowledge on HIV. Right. I am good the to journey go. You've taken yeah, us so I and I, I remember telling people that I'm a complete case study. Right. Yeah. You've done the whole cycle. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've made myself and my kids guinea pigs. So right. let's show you guys practically how right. it works. Right. So that's why I'm here today. I came but, out but in May. But then you then met someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you have someone in your life right yeah. now. Yeah. Tell tell. Tell us about that a bit. Okay, so in 2016, when I was still cursing on men are dogs yeah. and all yeah, that yeah, and yeah. all that, <laughs> yeah. So this man comes into yeah. my life, right? And um, it was his first time in Kenya. Right. He came for vacation, right? And I was so he's I was not just, Kenyan. No, he's not Kenyan, right? So I was um, nursing heartbreak. You know, right. when you are nursing heartbreak, when you're not moved on yep. for girls, yeah. You are, um, your skin is withered. You're done. You know, it shows everything. out. Yes, yeah, yes. everything, everything you just done. Where right. when Nishida when right. someone looks at you? <laughs> so that's how I was right. back then. Yep. And so when someone approached me and told me that I'm so beautiful, right. I didn't believe them, of course, yep. you know? Yep. Yeah, and then um, specifically he's German. So I read history about Germans right. and I knew maybe they were racist. Right. So I figured, no, this one, uh, two thousand like like yeah. right. so I just took the number and then yep. that was it. Yep. Yeah. And then um, I think I blocked him actually mm. uh, in late 2016. Mm. And then when I came out, I think he saw one of my uh, YouTube videos. Mm. And he actually came back again. Mm. He looked for me on Facebook right, and on right, Instagram. Right. So I saw one of one of his messages on Instagram. Right. And that's why we are here today. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the future looks beautiful. Yeah. It In does. a moment, Fanny, tell us, uh, having gone through all of this journey, mm -hmm. how are you then? Are you using this journey mm -hmm. also then to for the benefit of other people? Mm -hmm. Are you involved in some activism and all of that stuff? How are you giving mm -hmm. back in this journey? I am involved in so many um, activities on advocacy. Right. Like I am I'm one of the members in uh, MIPA. Right. MIPA is under an ASCOP. Right. It's, it it, it um, refers to meaningful involvement of people living with HIV and AIDS in right. Kenya. Right. I also do a column right. on the Nairobian. Right. I, I, I have a column there. Right. Uh, it's, it's so unfiltered. It talks about 
everything HIV, you know how there's so much about all these 15 men. Right. Uh, one of them even sued me right. because I didn't tell them in time that I'm HIV positive right. and all that. So right. there's so much. It's right. so unfiltered right. there. Right. And of course, I use my platform to really create more and more awareness right. in the most unfiltered and scripted way Absolutely. I could ever go. Absolutely. Yeah. Just as raw as it as gets. As it gets, yeah. I want to thank you, Ferdinand. Thank it you is for so having me. so amazing just to have you yeah. and just share that story. And I think uh, you embody the fact that then sometimes when you hit a corner on your road, it's mm -hmm. not the end of the road. There's oh, yes, so much not. life still ahead. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's still a whole lot more to do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, un unfortunately, some of these amazing stories, time does what di time does to us. It's unfortunate that then we are just completely out of time. But hasn't that been just an amazing story? And, 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 and as it is our tradition, man, let us know two things you picked out of our conversation with Fanny mm -hmm. that you can pick. Two lessons that encourage you and challenge you not to stop at anything but to pursue greatness with everything that you've got. As we say in the Goldmine Show, you have gold on the inside of you. You're a gold mine and you've got to bring it out. How did the story of Fanny help you and challenge and encourage you to become everything that you're supposed to be? Please write down to us and let us know what, you were ta what your takeout was out of today's show. We want to thank you so much and I just want to say thank you so much, Fanny. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Until next next time this has been the gold mine show follow us on facebook on twitter and uh on, on on youtube and also on instagram and let us keep encouraging you and from all of us you are a gold man god bless you and until next time thank you very much